moving into the third quarter final of the compound men's competition. Okay, and now we enter the top half of the draw where we see Duncan Busby taking on Neil Bridgewater. Again, these are another two very experienced archers. We should, we should see some great shooting from these two. Duncan was ranked fifth, and Neil was ranked fourth. Middle of the pack. So <laughs> very closely ranked. Yeah. Both of them shooting for, for Team Mybo. I believe we've got four Mybo shooters in the um, in the top eight for the men. A um, couple of Hoy and a couple of Piercy. I think. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Target one, one. Duncan Duncan it's nice to see a sort of like a range of different shooters and people from sort of shooting different bows as well. So. <laughs> so Neil has previously won um, the finals, yeah, uh, twice in 2015 and 2016. Two years running. Back then, Duncan, yeah. Duncan actually won the first ever. Oh wow! Finals at back in 2009. So, oh, yeah. that is a while ago now. Yeah. He's been around a long time. <laughs> Don't get to lead off. Yeah. It's just how you want to open up. That's it is it. indeed. Yeah. See if Neil can reciprocate. just as the arrow went. So Neil here, he was uh, a great oh, recurve yeah. shooter. Yeah, before we switched over to a compound. One of the few people that has shot 1,300 with a recurve and 1,400 with, with a, a compound. compound. Yeah, not many people can say they've done that, so... I mean, that's great to be able to sort of dominate both categories as well, you know, know that you're capable of doing the two. Hey. <coughs> so good group from Duncan, just a little bit high. Seven, down to the last couple of seconds, oh, but waiting it out. Yeah. Good decision there. I think that's where his <laughs> experience comes through, and also he's probably one of the calmest. Yeah, he's honestly guys just that I've ever met. It's so strange watching him shoot because you've, you've no idea what he's thinking. He just looks so relaxed. <laughs> well, it's a good shot or a bad shot. You won't you won't know the difference just by looking at him. He's just he's just really relaxed with his shooting. <laughs> Great teammate, so yeah, camaraderie showing through. So Duncan will be shooting first. So he's trailing in the first after the first end. to now just a little bit too low just missed out on that 10 there Seven, 
Ted. Ted. I mean, Neil's found that Ted very quickly. He's settled in really well. Ted. coming through there with the last few seconds. Yeah. Wow, that is such, he's, he's solid on the shot there, he's yeah. committed on the front and it really does make the difference. Because even with that gust he was able to keep it in the zone. Yeah. Another great group from Duncan. Another solid end like from Neil, another 29 out of 30, so he maintains his three-point lead over Duncan. That's consistent shooting from Neil. Duncan. Yeah, they spent quite a lot of time together. Obviously, they're, they're my bow shooters, and uh, when the new bow was bought out, they had quite a lot of time. Yeah, they spent together, you know, like working on it and figuring out, you know, the changes to make after the first edition. So, I mean, it's, it's the sort of coach that you want someone who's very familiar with the way you shoot and and how you like how you like the shot to be. I mean, to be honest, today they're just keeping an eye on the clock. And yeah, the conditions. exactly. Because, I mean, the archer is in charge mm -hmm. of how they shoot and the coach can only really tell them, OK, this is, it's time to make the shot now. The snapshot from Duncan. Oh, right, the last second, that gust just... Yeah, I caught him there. I mean, th I think that was a lucky one to hit, you know, scoring. The whole way, I mean, Neil has got a bit of a longer shot, so sometimes that doesn't play in his favour. For example, when the gust comes in the last couple of seconds like it did then. But I mean, Duncan has shot a couple of eights, so it might not be the end of the world here if he can get in a couple of tens. Has, yeah. Nice. Managed nice to keep shot. it in the nine, yeah. yeah. It's got a two point lead at the moment. I mean, this is where the lead really comes in handy because yeah. a time like that when you do need it. Oh, yeah. Duncan being blown about all over the place yeah. and managed, managed to keep it on the face, but that was. It's been really tricky for the archers. Each match has been, it's almost been like I've been on a different field. Mm. Nine. Managers keep that one in the nine there. So six point lead. <laughs> yeah, just Shakes laughing about it. <laughs> smiles at Duncan as if to say, hey buddy, I know what's going on. Yeah, we've done the same thing here. <laughs> I mean, you can't really be mad at a shot like that. You, nothing you can do when they've just laughed it off and gone, oh well, it happened. <laughs> I mean, sometimes it does make a difference as to whether or not you get caught in it, or or you or you you don't, and if your opponent does, how that can affect your your thoughts as well. I mean, Neil opened up with that six, but luckily Duncan also got caught in a similar gust, which had the same effect. So the six, therefore, wasn't that much of a deficit for him. Yeah, yeah. 
Back shot in the from middle. Neil. Yeah. Similar to seasons earlier. Earlier, that was, that was uh, just. It was. I mean, you couldn't get it. You couldn't have got it any closer. I mean, it just goes to show. I mean, oh. these are men that are usually shooting well into the top 40s, and it just goes to show how conditions like this can affect anybody. It doesn't really matter yeah, both how much you pull in or anything. It can both really these move archers you. have got a, a best of 148 out of 150 this year. That, I mean, that is insane shooting out of 15 yeah, and yeah. dropping two out of 10. It's it's not an easy feat to be able to do that. And they're both. I mean, it just goes to show how evenly matched they are as well. If that's both their PBs for this year, this year. They're both capable of shooting um, similar, very high standard scores. Yeah. It's a nice comeback end there for the Duncan. That's a great end from Neil as well. 29 yeah. out of 30 to Duncan's 28, so just pushing himself further into the lead. I mean, seven points going into the last end. It's a comfy place to be sitting. It's comfortable, yeah. but... <laughs> That's a, such a clean <laughs> shot. Yeah, I mean, Neil looks so solid throughout that, and uh, yeah. I mean, you can tell exactly with his shots if it's going to be a 10 or not. He's, he's such a clean shooter. <laughs> Both these guys opting for V bars on their bow, maybe to give them a little extra stability. Yeah, just that added weight can hit, help you just stay a bit more gravitated. Um, but it's just personal preference, really, as to whether it sits better for you, whether it doesn't, or whether you prefer um, a single bar. But it's the sort of thing that an archer can chop and change and play around with and see what works best. And sometimes they might have a different setup for different conditions. direction of the winds changed since um, this morning's matches it's now the flags are now going towards the right hand side it's coming from the left nice. whereas before we were seeing most people sort of the left hand side top side of the eight and nine Neil's already won the match. Yeah. I mean, the beginning of the match was completely different to how it's finished in terms of what they've had to shoot in. And Neil, that's, a, that's a great score. That's a nice Neil. finish, yeah. That's actually the highest score so far on the men's quarterfinals. Just goes to show, doesn't it? I mean, the sort of conditions they're having to battle with here. Yeah, I mean, 140 for these men, usually. They probably wouldn't be happy with and in these conditions. It's you take it any day, any day. Confirmed as the winner of that quarter final, and he will face the winner of the next match. Yep. 